Now, we talked about the different pitfalls already and uh, the countermeasures that one could put in place. But of course, this requires that the data are available. And that is a common issue in the industry that the data, the patient data, are not being made available in time. Usually, site staff enters the data within a time frame of weeks after a patient visit or even months later. And that, of course, is not what uh, a risk-based monitoring strategy can be based upon. So one countermeasure could be that the sites are encouraged to enter the data in a timely fashion. And, and timely in this context may mean within 24 or 48 hours and not later than that. And only, and only once those data are available in such a timely fashion, one can avoid those pitfalls and run really a solid risk-based monitoring strategy. So we talked a lot about the different functions within the sponsor companies like a pharma company or a CRO that need to be involved in the risk-based monitoring uh, strategy and approach. Uh, we did not yet talk about the uh, service provider or the provider of the data, in this case uh, the uh, sites and the site staff. Um, in the past, usually the site staff has not been informed or involved in any of the activities run on the sponsor site. The sites expect the monitors to show up every six weeks. Uh, they prepare for those six week intervals and once the monitor is gone, uh, they fall back to their old habits. Now with risk-based monitoring, and we talked about that, the data need to be available much faster in a timely fashion. And it may be advisable to involve also the sites in the risk-based monitoring strategy. Involve in the sense that at least the process is being communicated to the sites so that they understand why a monitor shows up after two weeks or only after eight weeks uh, and maybe also in irregular intervals rather than the standard six week interval as in the past. It may also be of interest to the sites to see how they are doing performance wise compared to the expectations on one hand but maybe also compared to how the other sites uh, perform. Um, and I have seen uh, cases uh, where um, sharing the information about the status of a trial and um, showing the different centers, of course anonymized, um, showing the different centers and how they are doing that this uh, sort of com uh, competition amongst the sites improved uh, the overall quality of the data, the timeliness of uh, the data being available and the overall performance of the sites. So it may be um, eventually um, smart to involve the sites, inform them about uh, what risk-based monitoring is all about and uh, how the other sites are doing. So, in my opinion, we have three different types of monitors. We have the on-site monitors, the classical monitoring staff that goes to the sites, does the source data verification, source data review, um, checks you know, that all the documents at the sites are in place, and then uh, ensures that the data that have been transcribed from the, the original source into the EDC system uh, have been, or that this process has been done appropriately. Now, in risk-based monitoring, we need two additional roles. Um, there's on one hand uh, the centralized monitoring role and there's a remote monitor. And I would like to um, describe a little what these two additional functions are supposed to do. The centralized monitoring group, to start with that one, is a group that looks at the data in a more holistic way. Uh, looking at distributions of data, looking for outliers uh, within a trial, looking for uh, lots of missing data and the overall performance of the sites. And uh, the centralized monitoring group is then going to provide feedback to the on-site monitor in case um, a certain action has to be initiated at the site. Now there's this third group, the so-called remote monitoring group, uh, a group that is actually new and has to be implemented probably more in the future than uh, right now because the remote monitoring group is supposed to review the electronic or the paper-based uh, health records 
of the patients in question remotely. And currently I personally do not see any means or let's say reasonable means to implement a process where someone at the sponsor site or CRO site can have a remotely access to an electronic health record or a paper record in the hospital, in the clinic to do source data review. So I think this is something that needs uh, to be evaluated further and there may be ways to do that in future but currently I personally don't, don't see that happening. Now the question is which of these three monitoring roles is affected mostly by the implementation of risk-based monitoring and I personally think it is the on-site monitors. The on-site monitors now have to be much more flexible than in the past. Um, they need to do the source data verification and all their uh, processes in an irregular, on an irregular basis compared to the past. That on the other hand means the monitoring uh, group, in particular the on-site monitors, need to be involved in the rollout strategy of risk-based monitoring at the company. They need to be involved in defining the process, they need to be involved in rolling out the process in the training part and they are also the ones that probably uh, need to communicate risk-based monitoring and the activities to the sites because they are our link to the site staff. And uh, I think this is really important and should not be underestimated how important it is to involve the on-site monitors in this entire rollout of the process.